We are here today with Bill Longbreak, Executive in Residence at the F Center for Financial Policy. Bill publishes a monthly letter for us called the Longbreak Letter, where he touches upon various economic topics. And today he will be chatting with me about some of the issues that he brought up in his latest April letter. Thank you for joining me today, Bill. It's good to be here with you, Michelle. Um, to start things off, I wanted to talk about the employment report that just came out this morning. Um, and this report showed that 244,000 jobs were created just last month. Um, now, Dow Jones previously reported an expectation of 185,000 jobs to be created. Based on the risk that you laid out in your April letter, was this unexpected? And what does this mean in terms of recovery for our economy? Well, Michelle, I think if you look at all the employment data, and there's a lot of it, uh, some of it's very positive and some of it's sort of lukewarm and some of it's kind of ugly. All right, so what I said in the April letter was that uh, we would have a slow recovery and I think the employment reports uh, that have come out in the last few days are very consistent with that finding. Uh, let, let me review some of the statistics here just uh, for the sake of the people who are watching. Mm -hmm. Unemployment claims came out and they spiked enormously, and it surprised the markets. It was uh, wildly above expectations, and the stock market initially reacted quite negatively. The Bureau of Labor Statistics, which puts out that report every Thursday morning, explained that this week's report was actually probably um, not very reliable because of a late Easter, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that Oregon put in place a new unemployment program, and they even mentioned supply chain interruptions because of the problems in Japan, right. all right? Mm -hmm. So pretty much the market very quickly then discounted the importance of that number. But that's illustrative of when data comes out, uh, single point data oftentimes has got things that are oddities in them that smooth out over time as you get revisions or additional reports. So let's take a look, closer look at the payroll employment report. There are actually two reports that come out at the same time. One is called the payroll employment report. The other one is the household survey. And they're actually done in two different ways. The payroll report is based on a survey of employers, payrolls. I mean, I guess that's Makes sort of sense. obvious. Mm -hmm. And the household report's actually done on a survey of 60,000 households. Mm -hmm. So it's collected in a very different way. And from a month to month, the reports can be quite different, but over a long period of time, they converge. And this particular month happened to show quite a divergence, uh, which probably will get ironed out in the future. But let's, let's review the numbers here for a moment. As you said, the payroll uh, reported 244,000 net new jobs were created in the month mm -hmm. of April on a payroll basis. And there were actually backward revisions to February and March of 45,000. So actually, uh, it wasn't just 244, well, closer to 300,000 right. upward revision uh, totally. So that's very good. But if you look then at the household survey, guess what happened? it said that 190,000 jobs disappeared in the month of April. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. <laughs> so you've got one going way up and the other one mm -hmm. down. Now, if you look over a longer period of time, there's also a divergence that uh, requires a little explaining. A payroll employment over the last year has been up 1.4 million, or about 1% uh, increase mm -hmm. year over year. But uh, household employment's only been up two-tenths of 1% during that period of time, or about 300,000 jobs. And if you look at another measure that's in the household report, it's called the labor force. Mm -hmm. And what the labor force is, is the number of people who want to work or are working. Mm -hmm. And the difference between the labor force and the house employment number is the unemployment number. That's mm -hmm. how that's derived. Well, the labor force over the last year has declined seven-tenths of 1%, or 1.1 1 .1 million people. So what's, what's going on here? Well, 
I won't force you to answer that. I'll right. give you the answer. Is that, is that the discouraged worker effect? It's the discouraged worker effect. Okay. It's, it's people who can't find jobs who uh, simply are dropping out of the labor force. They're not looking for work anymore. Right. But when they don't look for work, they're not counted as unemployed. And so part of the decline in the unemployment rate up until this month was due to the discouraged worker effect. Mm -hmm. Now this particular month you had the labor force go down and the unemployment number go up. And uh, the unemployment rate went from 8.8% to 9%. Mm -hmm. So you cut through all of that and, and the bottom line is two steps forward, so jobs are being created, mm -hmm. but one step back that the people are being discouraged and the labor market's still quite weak overall. Another indicator of the weakness is if the labor market is strong, then people have ability to compete for higher wages, to push wages up. Sure. Well, the wages year over year right now, the hourly wage rate's up 1.9%, and if you adjust that for inflation, it's actually purchasing power is down slightly mm -hmm. over the last year. And that's been very stable for several months now. It's actually, that's a good thing that it's stable, but it's not a good thing that it's not rising. Right. And overall, it indicates that the labor market still is incredibly weak, but mm -hmm. slowly improving. Slowly. Now, with the discouraged worker effect, when the economy does recover some more and these workers n now become encouraged, as they re-enter the labor force, does that mean that the unemployment rate will still remain fairly um, steady because they are now re-entering the labor force and they are going to well, be I think as unemployed? I th you're thinking in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It probably will continue to come down as the economy strengthens, but mm -hmm. not as rapidly as the n number of new jobs created might suggest. Understood. Great. Thank you.